Hey everyone, uh, Typhoon is out and I'm super excited. Uh, this unit uh, has been a long time uh, waiting for it. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. Let's take a look at her stats and skills and uh, let's see if she's worth summoning at all. I've heard good things, but I haven't heard like uh, as detailed stuff as other characters. So this is going to be kind of a surprise. Also, I haven't read the descriptions uh, beforehand like I usually do. So uh, first off, her art's pretty good. Can't wait for the art tier list. She's going to be definitely top tier. Uh, we have the generic banner. So she is a festival. That wasn't clear or obvious enough. She's a witch. So it's going to be an automatic festival for the most part. Uh, we have the other witch festivals featured as well, semi featured. Um, they are on the banner. And then we have the actual featured units. What's up? Which, um, pretty sure Priscilla just got a transcendence. Yeah. So I haven't seen her transcendence. We'll have to see how good that is. Uh, transcendence unit, though. Pretty good pick. Uh, Rhine, eh, Rem, uh, I've seen her be used on some teams, don't know how good she really is, uh, kind of forgot what she does as well, we'll have to see, taking a look at her stats, she's got 18k HP, 700 attack, really solid defense, she's pretty quick as well, I like that, uh, then we have standard stats over there, she's got, oh, she's got a quick lead, yeah, a lot of defense, and then she's also got quickness. Okay, uh, we'll take a look. Switch on over. All right, let's see. Where's her leader? Okay, yellow allies, agility plus 15. Pretty solid. She's got her basic attack. We'll go ahead and open that up. Basic attack, magic attack, one enemy is 700% power, 100% chance to inflict taunt for one turn, and increase cooldowns by one turn for all enemies. The power of the skill increases the more agility. Nice, she's an agility-based attack unit. I love that. Uh, she de she decreases cool or increases cooldowns for all the enemies, even though you're only attacking one. I love that. That's so sick. Okay, so then she has her passive. Let's see, receive immunity to transgression. Okay, so that's a new that's a new one. Uh, activate authority of judgment preemptively while the field effect is active 50% agility 100% defense and grant immunity to distraction buff steal and peel off when an ally is defeated steal five buffs from every enemy including shield or reflection ignoring resistances given them to all allies and increase tra transgression effect by 5000 okay Oh, they have an explanation here. Let's go ahead and read the explanation for transgression. It's a debuff. Okay. During transgression, damage dealt by a unit will accumulate. And when that unit receives damage, the accumul accumulated value will be added to the received damage as additional transgression damage. Effect has no limit. It will not decrease during its effect. Transgression is retained after being defeated and revived. Damn, <laughs> you die and come back to life. That shit's still going to be there. <laughs> and they said you ain't going nowhere. God damn. Okay, this unit's kind of nutty. What the fuck? Um, then we have skill three. I like this a lot, by the way. Not only does she steal five buffs from the enemies. Uh, I don't know how it works. I would assume she steals five random buffs. Then she puts them on herself. And then those five buffs that have been put on herself duplicate to the to your allies because it does say uh, apply to allies. So I'm not I'm assuming it's the same five for every single one of your allies, but it's just random which five it is. Or it could be straight up like five random on every single character. Like it could be five different buffs on every single character. I don't know. Um, it, it can steal shields and reflection too, though. So that's pretty good. Um, and then you're immune to a certain amount of stuff. Pretty solid. Then we have um, the skill two peel off all buffs from all enemies, ignoring buffs and debuff resistances and transgression. Hmm. Hold up. Hold on. Wait. Okay. Magic attack with 700% power, ignoring damage mitigation. 20 times transgression damage with 100% chance to inflict taunt and increase cooldowns by two turns. The power of the skill increases the more agility. Okay, so this is AOE. Ignoring buffs. It's worded weird. Peel off all enemies. Peel off all buffs from all enemies, ignoring buffs and debuffs, uh, resistances, and transgression. I don't know why it says and transgression. 
Like, what, are you peeling that off so you're getting hit now? Like, I don't understand. Um, magic attack, 700% power, ignore damage mitigation. Ignoring damage mitigation, which just makes so many units useless because there's like all these units where you only take a certain amount of, you know, damage from this unit. Yeah, she's great. I love her. God, I really wish I was able to pull her. You might have noticed that I actually did some pulls. Uh, I wasn't feeling it. Didn't want to record. So I just did them off camera. Unfortunately, did not get lucky. Uh, I think the only featured unit I pulled was Priscilla. So very unlucky. It is what it is. Um, yeah, pretty solid skill too. I'm digging it. I get it now. A little bit more. <laughs> um, then we got the field skill. Or not the field skill. Just the skill three. Um, inflict transgression on all enemies and allies. And allies. Oh, excuse me, that's one of those. Ugh, whatever. Except yellow allies. Ooh, I love that, though. See, okay, so this is how... This is, like, really good character building. Okay, so you had the first units that were just straight up... Everyone gets debuffed, no matter who you are. But now we're getting to the point where that's getting old, and it's getting really annoying. And in order to make better units, you retain those core aspects of getting everyone on the field a debuff... But also, you can kind of slide under the radar if you have certain criteria met, which here, it would be all yellow allies. So everyone on the field, including yourself uh, with your allies, gets this debuff. But if you don't have if you have yellow allies, they can ignore it. So that's like kind of really good. Like it's like a really good step into making better characters. That's like a really good workaround. So I like this a lot. Uh, ignoring buffs and debuff resistances obviously activate a field effect so yeah this is a field skill with attack and production and agility enhancement for three turns okay that's yeah it's just helping her just do damage basically uh i i really like this unit she's great yeah just looking at her on paper like i don't even need other units like she's great by herself uh she's gonna do wonders for yellow team um, I wonder how good she's going to be with the other festival on yellow, which, uh, that's Ryan. So I wonder how she's going to pair up with him, but I don't know. I really like this unit. I want to, I'm curious to see what kind of teams she's used in. So I'm going to check them out in PVP, uh, see like the top teams that use her. Yeah, she's great. So I don't know. It is a festival banner, uh, summon at your own will, but I really like this character. I think she's got some great ideas. I think she's incorporated those ideas really well. Uh, we do also have the translations for the memory this time, so that god. Um, let's see, we have the event memory and the gotcha memory. So the gotcha memory is going to be a magical unit required. It's going to be agility from 20 to 29% agility, if I'm not mistaken. Is that, um... Yeah, it's 29%. Then she has two passives. Scroll down to those. Uh, it's got... When the enemy increases action gauge, activated one turn cooldown increase on two random enemies. Mm, I would have preferred a full team, but I guess that would be pretty overpowered. When the enemy's cooldown uh, time decreases, reduce action gauge for all enemies by 40%. Ooh, okay, so I like that. Okay, so you increase the cooldown only to guarantee that it's going to decrease. And when it does, you're basically... If they don't have like an insane number of action gauge increase, like 80% or like 60% or something, 40% is a good chunk. So you're basically knocking off their skill um, down a peg with that. So I, I like that a lot. If you get the full memory, that's pretty solid. Uh, it is, I would definitely run this on her. She, it seems pretty good. Um, let's take a look at the event memory. It's going to be action gauge, magical unit, or not action gauge, sorry, agility. When enemies cooldown time increases, activate cooldown time reduction by 1% or one turn. When enemy action gauge increases, action gauge will increase by 30%. Mm, it's a little bit different, but it's more or less the same concept. I prefer her actual banner memory a little bit more. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to try and summon some more. I really want this unit. She's like one of my favorite characters, not only, uh, but she's like super sick. Like she's a solid unit. Um, if you're on the fence about summoning, like, I don't know, I, 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 I like her a lot. That's just me. Um, hopefully this helps you and informs you on your decision making. And I'll see you guys also, 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 uh, she's on normal festival banner. It's like a, it's like a 14 day. So 
I mean, she is technically a normal. And we also have other festival banners. Um, but yeah, we have two weeks for this, which is out of the ordinary because you usually don't have this much time. So definitely you can hold out. Uh, we do have one day if you wanted to just summon on these and you have like enough for both. I don't know, like maybe. Uh, these actually are pretty good value for the like for the most part. I really think the red is still the best one. I really, really did want to summon on the red because I wanted this Amelia. But uh, yeah, just Typhoon, you know, you just had to do it. Uh, but yeah, good luck and uh, I'll see you guys next time.